Alright, in the last tutorial I just finished making the buttons here and they animate fairly well. And what we're going to do here is add a little bit more animation to them so that they're a little bit fancier. So I'm going to go inside of them and just take a quick look at this um, button. I'd really like to add something like a little movement to the um, text. So I just moved it over about 7 pixels and moving it back. So it just makes it a little bit nicer animation. Plus, I'm going to add just another little feature to it as well, and that is I'm going to have a little ellipse that comes in. So I'm going to start with an ellipse outside, Let's have it centered with it real quick, I'm going to move it just, just a little bit outside the edge there of that particular object. Oh, and I do want it below the invisible button. There we go, below the invisible button. button. And uh, Mm, color isn't amazing. Maybe I'll give it some sort of. I want to see it when it comes in, but I don't want it to be too crazy. So I'm going to first create a position for it. Go to the next keyframe and then move it in a little bit. It doesn't have to be too far in, but now you'll see just a quick little animation of that button coming in. Now, of course, if I go back to the main stage and I test this, you'll see that all of them have those little buttons, but they're all beside it, which is not really what I want. I want the button to be kind of hidden or the, the little object to be hidden. So if you go inside of it and you go to the stage of that individual button, you'll see that you have an overflow property that you can set to hidden. And what this means is that that will be hidden and will come in as needed. Now the other thing that's kind of boring is that this animation is linear right now. I'm going to select all of them and right click and choose easing and do something a little bit nicer. Ease out, court, these are kind of nice. I think that it's nice to have something that's a little bit more um, fluid to your animation. So now if I go back and I test this with control enter then you'll see I get a little bit better animation and of course you can play with the effect that you want for your transition sometimes when you have transitions easing in like this you might actually need to make your your um, animation just a little bit longer so I'm just gonna add these a little bit longer test it again Oops. Looks like I might need to refresh that hidden. Oh, this is just one of those things that happens. Sometimes it gets glitchy on you. Definitely found that to be true with this software. So sometimes what I do is I close and I bring it back up. Yep, so the visible set again instead of hidden. And now it's working again. So those are a little bit smoother. And because we have the easing on there, it just needs to be a little bit longer as an animation. All right, now we're going to make the l other kind of button here. And that's got a CSS button. And I've actually already drawn one real quick. So here's the button right there. It's going to be called CSS button. Inside of it has a button background, which is just this pink color. The text three, which is the title. And by the way, um, one of the things I thought I might just go ahead and show as well is Google Fonts. If you've never used a Google Font, now is a great opportunity for you to use one. And if you open up a Google Font like this, aha, here we go, There's one called Railway you'll find the, co the code that allows you to link to it. So I'm going to copy that code, go to Edge Animate, and uh, let's see, I'm inside the button real quick, so over here in Fonts, I'm going to add a new font, and do Custom, and this is going to be the embed code. So just putting in that code, whoops, forgot to give it a name actually. Then I need to go back to my place here, and then here it is, Railway and Sans Serif. 
don't believe that you have to copy the font family out too. I'm not sure that it likes that part. So I think we just need the railway itself. Railway and self sans serif. So if we save that now we can select that text over here on the left. Yep, you can see that railway um, that we can actually choose. So now we've got a new font from Google that's been placed in here, which is kind of nice. I'm not exactly sure what why it comes up with three different versions, but I uh, wouldn't worry about it too much. All right. Now, with this particular button, one of the things that I want to look at is I know that I'm going to be applying a CSS transition to this element um, or a CSS um, change to this element. So here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to do it on the invisible button again instead of doing it out on the main level. That way, if I duplicate the button, it will already have that applied. So the way we do this is I'm going to go back to my reference that I have. And uh, I'm going to just start with this right here. There we go. And I know that this is going to be the button background is that I want what I want to change the, co the uh, color of. So I'm going to go to up open actions for the invisible button. I'm going to say on mouse over. I'm going to go ahead and um, put in this code. And it's this timeline. Find the object called whatever it is and change the background color CSS to a new color. So I'm going to go ahead and call this button underscore BG BTN under, uh, actually regular dash BG then the background color and this will go to a new color and I can actually sample that color if I don't know my colors you know right off the top of my head you can sample this color from somewhere else if you like like that kind of color there is kind of cool. So this kind of blue isn't too bad. Now I'm going to copy all that code and for a mouse out I'm going to take it back to the color that it currently is. So I'm going to use that color picker which is called the um, oh what is it called? Oh it's some sort of color picker that I can have. called the instant eyedropper. Sorry, this code window likes to come up. So anyway, I've got the instant eyedropper. Mouse out should take it back to its original color. So I'll paste that color in. Oops, let me make sure that I get that color. D, yep, D547. There we go. Now, if I test it, you'll see I've got my CSS button, and it's actually changing it when I hover over it using CSS, which is pretty cool. The last thing I need to do is just make that a little bit nicer. And the way we do this is by adding a class to this background element, and I'm going to change the class to Button Transition. It looks like I've already applied it because I've done the tutorial already. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and save this real quick. It's very important that you save because otherwise things can go mess up while you're doing stuff in here. And back in the HTML file, I'm going to open up that HTML file. And I want you to take a look at it. You'll see that there's a style section here at the top and there's a script section. I do want you to be aware that you can't put anything in the head section otherwise um, it will be kicked out by Edge Animate. But you can put things in the body section. And what we're going to put in here is a little bit of, of HTML CSS code. So I have one called Button Transition. Oh, I need to go back into here. And I'm going to put it in the top of the body section. I can save that real quick. And when I save, instantly um, Edge Animate says you've changed this. Do you want to reload it? And yes, you say yes, I want to reload it. And then I'm going to immediately save again. And uh, sometimes I even like to close and come back open. 
I find it just is less buggy that way. And now, when I test this, you'll see I'm actually getting a nice little smooth CSS transition instead. So pretty, pretty cool, obviously. Now, there are some other ways for us to do uh, the animated buttons and all that, but I'm not going to play with it too much right now. We can change it with um, changing bitmap graphics, um, and that would be doing a CSS background on an image or the URL of an image, um, which is really kind of nice. And you can change the opacity and all that. Plus, you can uh, do it. Let's see, up here somewhere else, I have another sample. Yeah, here's where you can change an image source. Um, one of them is a background image, and the other one is if you make the image. Um, if you select the item and you make it an image instead of a div, then you can actually use the source to change it. And that's where this is. The attribute, the source attribute also works. But pretty cool what you can do with just some pretty simple um, CSS transitions to create animated buttons. Um, another way of doing it would be having a gradient of, of a graphic that slides up and down a little bit and that way by moving the background position you can also do some really nice animated effects so go ahead and play with that some um, and see what you can do to add just a little bit of CSS to your files and uh, we're gonna call it quits here for this buttons right now and uh, we'll be talking in class thanks